Resident Evil, a series of games where you have to survive, upgrade weapons, and shoot a lot of zombies. A series they've been here ever since the 90s. But when you've played them all, what do you do now? I'm here to help you with that. If you enjoy Resident Evil, you won't be disappointed with these eight games. Very similar gameplay, but have their own original stories, and changes up the gameplay a bit in a nice way. This is eight great games like Resident Evil. Let's start with number one, The Evil Within 2. This game's one of my favorites, and it's mostly because of the difficulty modes. If you're not good at survival games, this game's perfect for you. When I played on easy mode, I could pretty much steamroll the game and only died once in the entire playthrough. The gameplay feels great. You got your green gel, but in addition, there's now a crafting system, which really added the much needed variety that the first game lacked. Both gunplay and stealth feel great, mostly letting you decide how you want to approach certain situations. At first, I wasn't on board with the open world sections of the game, but I eventually warmed up to them and now can't even imagine the game without them. The non-open world areas are on a whole different level though as they're stunning, confusing, horrifying, and yet brilliant, as expected from the ingeniously twisted Shinji Mikami. An entertaining mix of linear sections and small free-to-roam levels with side quests. Pretty functional menus which are highly reminiscent of Resident Evil with a fully customizable HUD. Plus, even when you play this game with an Xbox controller, the controls just feel wonderful. And not a big issue like in other shooting games, and pretty much all the bosses in the game are fantastic, and they're not too hard. You just have to find out how to avoid their attacks, and you can always find some ammo laying around exactly how good boss battle should be. To wrap it up, I cannot recommend this game enough. If you love third-person psychological survival horror, it's a must-buy. It's a masterpiece there shouldn't be forgotten. Number 2. Heaven Dust 2 Heaven Dust 2 is a survival horror game and a Resident Evil clone, like an exact replica of it. I read this game was better than the first one, so I played this game first, and I'm happy I did. Let's talk about the good things. Amazing chibi-style graphics, gun customization slash upgrades and ammo combinations so you can make ammo for the gun you use the most. Aiming mechanic for headshots, both with mouse and keyboard and controller modes. Was using an Xbox controller myself. Huge detailed map showing item locations, locked doors, save points, weapon upgrade points, etc. Casual, normal, hard mode difficulty settings. Playthrough unlocks for new game plus mode. Fun costumes. Lengthy game. Getting your money's worth for sure. Quick weapon swap. Now, let's talk about the bad things. No quick button for healing. Have to go into menu to use healing items, which gets a bit annoying at the end of the game. Intro and outro cutscene dialogue moves too fast for slow readers or those reading out loud. Needs to be a click progression. The music, sadly, was minimal. The music that was in the game was really good, but would have been cool to have a bit more music in the game to offset the generic sound effects. I think they were going for a more original Resident Evil vibe with the silent feel to the areas, but overall this is a great indie game. They gave me that old PlayStation 1 feeling. And I absolutely bought a copy on Switch to play on the go. A game you shouldn't overlook. Number 3. Dead Space 2 I prefer this second game over the first one, but I'm not saying the first game is bad. You can enjoy them both. You play as Isaac Clarke in the aftermath of Dead Space 1's events. You're led to believe that you have a mental issue which can be cured if you listen to who's talking to you. Both Isaac's ambition to survive the odds, given rise by these messages, and your own ambition to run through the blood still keeps you going through the game, despite the off-putting level of horror and terror. Excruciatingly terrifying at a certain point where Isaac re-enters the USG Ishimura, only to be met by a swarm of unstoppable necromorphs which swarm him like wasps. The paranoia you feel when you hear a distant necromorph thinking you've killed them all and you think they're too far away to reach you in time? But just as you go to run, its fangs are buried in your leg is undescribable. Most definitely a game that gets you thinking. You constantly run into obstacles which enable you to use your mind to utilize many game mechanics such as telekinesis and freezing. You're able to freeze certain obstacles in time to ensure that they don't slice you into millions of pieces as you crawl towards your objective. Voice acting is fine, sound effects are also great. 
You'll often wonder if that sound is a monster creeping up on you or just a piece of metal rolling around. Nice idea with the spacesuit that implements interesting gameplay elements. Some clever puzzles, although not that challenging. Gameplay-wise, the combat is more satisfying in the original and Melee is also done better. There are some new weapons additions, but the Plasma Cutter and Pulse Rifle are still your best bet, just as they were in the first game. Action's more fluid than the last one, flow's excellent, and pacing is brilliant. Hardcore mode is unlocked after you finish the game at least once, and in addition to tougher enemies and fewer supplies, you can save your progress only three times, which really gets your heart pumping. Now the bad. Game is faster paced than the original, maybe faster than what a horror game should be. After a while, enemies become predictable, both the way they appear and the way they fight. I had fun being multiplayer with my brother, but there isn't much reason to play 50 hours of that, so just enjoy the story mode. I see myself returning to this universe from time to time to remind me that video games can be truly artistic, as they can be unforgettable experiences. Something you don't really get by watching a movie, only in a video game. Number 4. Tormented Souls This is a wonderful and very playable homage to the first Resident Evil 1 and to a lesser extent Silent Hill games, a survival horror that hits all the high notes of the genre with no big pitfalls to speak of. Gameplay's exactly what I wanted. Navigating a harsh and hostile environment and learning one's way around a spooky mansion with constant obstacles such as menacing creatures, adventure style, right key for the right door tracking, resource management of ammunition and healing items, and a great number of challenging but not onerous puzzles, all nicely paced with good use of negative space between ominous tension building and violent action. The frequent combat is a highlight, with fixed camera angles and tank controls making it not always easy to target or avoid enemies. This is all a completely intended part of the challenge and balances beautifully into the overall experience. Additionally, the player must manage the use of a light source. Your character cannot hold a heavy gun and a cigarette lighter at the same time, making combat impossible in some areas and forcing you to either simply flee or lure enemies to where they're vulnerable. Resource management feels just right. I never had that problem where you have too many items in your inventory, like in other horror games. And there's so much to do and explore across the map that I rarely have ever felt trapped into a fight. I wasn't able to prepare by searching elsewhere. At the same time, resources are generous enough that it's okay to miss a few shots and otherwise waste a few things. I certainly ran out of bullets or meds several times, but always made opportunities for myself and never felt backed into an impossible situation or forced to reload a save because of this. My absolutely only gripes with this game is that the voice acting is atrocious. It's worse than the original voice acting in the older RE and SH titles. It's literally laughable, but it didn't detract from the game all that much, and there's no new game plus. With most games of this genre, there are other reasons to do another run besides getting the other endings and beating your time. I hope they can make that in an update or something. But in the end, this is quite simply a perfect modern adaptation of a classic style of game we haven't seen much of in a long time. Number 5. Alan Wake I love this game. Alan Wake is a great psychological horror game with brilliant storyline, onslaught of enemies and lack of ammunition, despair, nice mountain scenery, pleasant radio and television stations, filmness and climate pours out of the screen and it's still a great audio track at the end of each chapter. Feels like you're playing through a Stephen King book. At its core, Alan Wake is a strategic action game. The point is to use the beam of light to manage the distance between enemies and yourself while taking them down. Light keeps them at a distance while burning off their armor. In the most desperate fights in the game, you've got to run a healthy balance between focusing on one guy to destroy his armor and keeping the light shined on everyone else to keep them at bay so you can take down one guy at a time. This strategic play ultimately slows down the pace of the game while ratcheting up the tension. It's super clever. The story's great, by the way. You might think it's schlocky, but that's kind of the point. The game zapping the quirky, occasionally bad writing of psychological horror stories, and it does a superb job at it. Instead of trying to be great literature, Alan Wake tries to fit within its genre and it does a fantastic job. You've got to be willing to be part of the game's peculiar quiddity, 
But if you do, it'll reward you. Visually and orally, it's a stunning experience, even if the gameplay weren't top-notch. I'd still go back to Alan Wake time and time again. Simply being there in its world is fascinating. Remedy crafts its moments so well that some of them are ingrained in my head. Listening to Pat Main on the radio, shooting monsters on a stage while the old guards of Asgard blast away on the speakers, getting your first flares? You need to play it. You won't regret it. It's the Stephen King fan fiction game you never knew you wanted. Number 6. Alien Isolation Let's talk about the mechanics, which, while they are a bit simplistic, lend themselves to the scenery that much more. There's a lot of button pushing and primordial hacking and lever pulling in isolation, which does wear thin after a while considering the standard formula is get to location X while avoiding everything in your way. But fortunately, this is circumvented by isolation's greatest strength, its fear factor. The sound of the alien crawling in the vents above you is constant, as well as the subliminal noises and creaks and bangs that keep your skin crawling, making you never aware when the alien will drop down and when it's on the screen. There's only one alien in this game? With virtually no scripting and mostly organic AI, creating the effective illusion that this is a real breathing predator that searches rooms and doubles back and reacts to sound. It's genuinely terrifying when you're hiding in a locker, barely a meter away from the beast, knowing that if it turns right, it might hear you breathing or your motion tracker beeping, rip off the locker door, and end you. But I have to mention some negatives. The alien can sometimes spend three or four minutes searching the room you're hiding in and leaving you no chance to get away before it leaves, and other times it may just drop out of a vent right in front of you and leave you no chance to escape. And given that isolation's style of hacking and even saving requires you to leave yourself vulnerable for a few seconds, the game can be very unfair with how quickly and without warning you can be killed. This is both the greatest strength and weakness of the game. Nothing you do is not potentially dangerous in some way. Sprinting down a hallway, using a save point, hacking a door, building an item, everything opens you up to a horrible death. And while that's incredibly atmospheric and nerve-wracking, at least a few times during your playthrough, you'll probably face a very unfair end. All that said, Isolation's Core is a solid, terrifying experience of a tried-and-true survival horror flies its colors well and executes its design almost perfectly. For any alien fan, for any survival horror connoisseur, and for any curious gamer that has enough money to reupholster their computer chair, this is a must-buy. Number 7. Days Gone Let's start with the bad and get it out of the way. When you first start out, you'll feel like you bought the wrong game. You cannot take on the hordes you've been seeing in trailers. Maybe if you've beaten the game, understand the mechanics, how to use the environment, or you're playing an easier difficulty. When you finally unlock your first proper primary weapon, the game drastically changes in pacing and what you can do and survive. Now the good. This game is varied enough to keep things fresh, has a reasonably forgiving fast travel system, and has meaningful rewards for doing the optional checklists. Health, stamina upgrades, camp currency for weapon and bike upgrades, crafting recipes and a few unique weapons, all of which keep the gameplay loop entertaining. Guns are weighty and fun, although the early guns pretty much require headshots, and hordes are really fun to beat. Beautiful open world and not a Ubisoft title, you'll never have to travel endlessly over boring recycled terrain, something's always around the corner or hill. Missions make great use of the open world to make it feel much bigger than it really is, by no means is the world small. Gameplay can go from cat and mouse and back again depending on your preparedness. The two main characters in the game have fantastic chemistry, and I do by their brotherhood. Bike gameplay is both fun and unique. Upgrading and maintaining it builds a certain attachment to it I appreciate. It. The story and acting are obviously subjective. I won't say anything about it here except that the voice acting is top-notch. No in-game ads or intrusive services. A single-player game without all the modern nickel-and-dime schemes of most, but some things could be better. Gas management can get a bit tedious, certain resources are crazy abundant, while others are so rare that you may not want to part with certain consumables. Trust system makes sense, but kind of falls on its face when it comes to the narrative. But even after saying these things, I love this game. 
feels like a Resident Evil open world game with thousands of zombies and really evil people. A game you should give a try someday. And finally, number eight, Daymare 1998. I think this is an underrated gem, but at the same time, I must say it's mostly for really hardcore Resident Evil fans. I must say, this game has some incredible graphics for a game made by an indie team. Most 3D indie games look completely horrible. It has more content than the Resident Evil 3 remake, which definitely is a positive in my book. Some of the sound effects are quite good, especially the guns. Some of the starting weapons are kind of bad, but when you get further in the game, you become a complete killing machine, which increases the fun factor. The environments are enjoyable, nothing incredible, but just the things I want in a horror game. You play as three characters, the elite soldier Lee, the helicopter pilot Raven, and the forest ranger Samuel. You play through their roles in the events following a chemical weapon mishap that turned the small town of Keensight into a hellscape full of bloodthirsty monsters. And I wish more horror games did something like this. The voice acting's not the sharpest, but that doesn't bother me much. The first three chapters was the best of five, totally. It was still an enjoyable game, but it felt a little bit rushed in the end. Great sharp graphics and lighting in the game, which brings a creepy atmosphere to life along with good sound effects and music. The gunplay's not as good as Resident Evil 2 Remake, but it still works. The reloading mechanic I didn't quite understand at first, but after I learned how it works, it became functional. In the end, this really feels like a Resident Evil clone just with an original story and PS2 classic gameplay. So that was some fantastic horror games that'll keep you awake at night, but give you a fun adventure at the same time. Resident Evil's been there since the 90s and will never be forgotten for how special those games are. Great action and terrifying horror. But anyway, what's your favorite horror game or horror movie? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. And I'll see you next time right here on Omega's Movie.